Hi, my name is Margaret Lewin and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Today I'm going to go about showing you how I made this absolutely adorable Santa sack for my granddaughter for Christmas. I've made quite a few of them so you might see pieces with the name Lion, you might see pieces with the name Natalie, you might see pieces with the name Austin or even AJ or Boone. So I've got seven grandchildren in total, so I've got seven Santa sacks to be making. You might be asking what a Santa sack is all about. Well, earlier this year, I got an email from Santa, and Santa let me know that wrapping all of these Christmas presents was getting a little expensive, and he wanted to cut back on the Christmas budget a little bit. So he asked if I would make a sack for him to leave my grandchildren's presents in. So sure enough, that's exactly what I've done. I've grabbed this beautiful grunge dot fabric from Moda and I have made Santa sacks. So stick around and I'll show you how I did it. One of the very first things that I did was took my Steema Seam 2 and I wrote out the letters of my granddaughter's name. Then I took just a plain piece of white cotton fabric and I pressed it really good, making certain that there weren't any strings or anything extra hanging around. Now, if you're not certain where to go about getting your letters from, I actually printed mine right off of Microsoft Word. I had um, the program on my computer. I went, I believe, up to size 400. I printed one on each piece of paper and just printed the letter once that I needed for each one of the kids. Natalie has two A's in her name, so I only printed the A off once and was able to use it multiple times to draw it. So the next thing you're going to see me do is I'm just going to take it. There's my granddaughter's name all done. There it is on the wrong side. I take my piece of fabric, lay it out. And the next thing I'll do is just score it so that I can easily remove the paper from the steamer seam and adhere it down to the fabric, which is what I'm doing here. Remember, when you lay it down, you want the reverse image to be showing up. You want the reverse facing you the right way facing down onto your fabric. So that's kind of important to make certain that you've got it on there right. And you can see I'm just fussing with a little bit, spreading it out and smoothing it out, and then I'm gonna press it down, which I'm doing now. Once I got it all pressed down, the next thing I do is just cut out my letters so that they're ready to go onto my fabric. So I'm cutting off my excess and now I will just take those and trace around it. And then my next step is to get my bag ready. So I will be grabbing my material in just a minute and I will be putting that down. I do suggest that you put your name, the letters, at least eight inches down from the top, from the raw edge at the very, very top. You can see me here working with Lion's name. I'm scoring it and putting it down. One of the things that I really do like about Steema Seam 2 is I can lay this down and it kind of sticks. It's just a little bit tacky so that if I want to move it later on, I can um, before I've, obviously before I've gone ahead and pressed it. Once I've pressed it, it's down there quite permanently. But you can see I'm just working away at putting Lion's name down. Um, a good idea to use a ruler of some sort. The Creative Grids 8.5 by 24.5 ruler would be absolutely perfect in a situation like this because you could lay it down on top of the red fabric and be able to line the name up really well. You can also, I think, see there I do have... A seam a little bit it's pressed in the center so that I can see where the center of the bag is to work with that so I'm just going to go ahead and get lion's name down and then our next step is going to be to top stitch that applique down and I will be taking you over to the sewing machine and showing you how I do that
the next step is to make certain that we've got our names or our letters firmly adhered to the fabric. So what I've got here, you can see I've got my Bernina number 20 open toe foot and I'm setting it up for a zigzag. And what I did was just lined up the right edge of my foot, the open toe part with the applique and just did a zigzag all the way around. I did it with white thread so the zigzag doesn't show up really well. I do suggest that if you have the needle down feature with your sewing machine, use that because it really does help. Put my granddaughter's name across the front of it and I just zigzagged it down. I walked you through how I did that. The next thing I'm going to do is take my second piece because remember we had two pieces of the bag. I'm going to put it together and I'm going to sew it all three sides. I'm going to leave the top wide open but I'm going to sew it down the side, down the bottom and up the other side. Then if you have a serger you could do this on your serger but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a straight stitch all the way around then I'm going to go back and I'm going to go all the way around it with a zigzag stitch just to stop it from fraying as time goes on. Once I get that done I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how I make the casing and how I give the um, buttonholes a little bit more support so that when you pull the string on the Santa sack, it doesn't ravel or tear the fabric or anything like that. So I'm gonna get right over to my sewing machine and get going on the sewing. The next thing I need to do is I need to get this folded over a quarter of an inch so that it's kind of finished off. So I'm gonna fold it over a quarter of an inch and then I'm gonna fold it over again a couple of inches and see that way it'll be all nice and and finished off and then I'll have a pocket right here to be able to put my cord through to cinch the sack. So the first thing I'm going to do because this is a multi-step process is I'm going to take my clover fusible web um, quarter inch fusing tape got my iron on and I'm just going to start by laying it on one side and I just lay it down close to the edge but not on the edge and I'm just going to press this down and it just presses down really easy do that all the way across my, my piece isn't real flat but we'll get it straightened around so I'm just going to press this here we go quick and easy and I am going to do this on both sides I'll only show you the one side but I am going to do this on both sides. Then when I get to the end, I just tear it off. It, it's like paper. It just, see, just comes right off. Then I'm going to grab a straight pin, find one on my design wall. So now I've got a straight pin. And as all I'm going to do is take the end of the straight pin and just score it across that. Because what that does is that scores the paper that's on it. I'm going to pull it off on both ends and then I put my pin back on my design wall and now I'm just going to fold it over and when you go to fold it over this time you can feel that little bit of um, that little bit of fusible there I'm going to just start at one end I'm going to fold it over take my iron and just press it down again I'll do that to the other side and then I'll come back and show you our next step. Either that or I'll do a fast forward while I do the next step. Now I'm just going to take it and fold it over and make sure that this is down good and it's pressed well. So I can just take it, match up my centers kind of, push it over, and then I can just iron right across it. And I'm going to just stick a pin in there till it cools just for a second fold that one back and now I'm going to do this side do the exact same thing just get it pressed so that it stays put and stick another pin in it just because till it cools it helps it to stay there because it's pretty hot right this second Oops. 
All right, so the next thing I need to do is figure out how big of a pocket I need to make to put the cord through. So I want the name to still show up on the other side, see? But I also want some room in there. So I don't want it really tight, but I don't want it really loose either. So here's another little handy dandy tool that I use once in a while. It's a clover press and seam, I think it's called. They're on my website. But what you can do is you can lay that in there, turn this over, and I'm gonna do it two inches. And then you can take your iron and you can just press right on it, which is really nice. And this fabric creates a nice, nice crease. So I will be able to follow that. I'm just going to make sure that I'm not on top of my fabric here. So I don't have multiple creases. And I'm going to do that again. Just stick it in there. In the pocket that I made. Flatten it out. Make sure I'm good and straight. Which I think I am. And then I can just press. I'm going to keep doing that all the way around. This will give me a good eyeball of where it is that I'm going to be sewing. So again, I'm going to turn it over, line it up, and just press right over it. Works great. I like these types of little handy dandy tools. They make um, your job a lot faster and um, a lot easier and it prevents some of those burned fingers which I am a big proponent of anything that stops me from burning my fingers when I'm sewing. So again I'm just going to roll it over and press it. Probably have one or two more presses left. Again, just lay it out flat so that I've got a nice hold of it. Put my little measuring pad in there and measure it out and then just press it. I'm going to check one more seam and then I'm going to be good on this. So then I can put this away. All right, so there that goes in the top right hand drawer. The fusible interfacing comes over here into the top, I'm sorry, top left, now top right. And I am good, I've got this all set. It's all ready to take over. I can pin it, but before I go to pin it, I need to do one more thing. I need to determine exactly where I'm going, I'm gonna take these out for right now where I'm going to put a little bit more stabilization in my bag because I'm going to have a rope. If you look at the bag like this, I want the rope to be coming over here on what's in my left hand. But what I have to do is I have to make a buttonhole through just this layer. So I'm going to put this back down again one more time. Okay. This is forming my little pocket. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm, I've got two pieces of the same material that I use to make the names. I've got two pieces of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pieces and I'm going to line them up right here. See my fold line? I'm going to line these up right at the seam right here so that I can make my buttonholes on top of these. So I have to score my paper off of them. It just helps if there's a little bit more stabilization there for the buttonholes so that when you go to cinch your sack up, it, um, it doesn't rip or tear or anything like that. So there's my first one. And again, I'm just taking a straight pin, scoring it, and then the paper peels right off. It makes it really easy to get it off the fusible. And I'm just gonna, I am gonna move that thread. Just gonna take it and put that down. All right, 
My seam allowance is free from that. I have not put that in there. I'm going to press these. Now I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and I'm going to make buttonholes underneath each one of these. So I'm going to turn it your way so that you can see it a little bit better. It seems kind of a little bit over there and I want to flatten that out. I'm going to get a ruler and this is my Creative Grids. What's this one? This one's two and a half by 18 and a half inches and I'm going to get my chalk marker. Um, I like the chalk one because no matter what it seems to come off. I have to turn it this way so that I can see it a little bit better. Now I know that it has to be below my fold line, okay, and I can feel the right, I'll draw a line actually, my little pieces of paper are right here. And that one starts there, goes there, I can feel it, which makes it nice. Okay, so there's my two little pieces of paper. I want my buttonholes to be even across my piece, so I'm going to line up my ruler with my piece and I think I'm going to start it right at the two and a half inches down and I'm just going to draw a line and then another line and then I'm going to take it down mm, do I want to go a full two inches no I'm going to take it down about let me flip this over so it's a little easier here would give me an inch here would give me an inch and a quarter quarter and I think that's enough I want to see what inch and a half would look like inch and a half would be a really big buttonhole so I'm going to take it back to the inch and a quarter and I'm going to draw two lines again and so now I know I need to make a buttonhole that starts here and ends here starts here and ends here I'm going to go over to my sewing machine, you go to yours, and however your machine tells you to make a buttonhole, that's what you're going to do. Then I'm going to pop on over to my machine, and I'm going to get my buttonhole made, and then I'm going to come back and show you what we do next. Alright, I've made my two buttonholes. I hope you can see them. You may not be able to, um, because I changed to a red thread. I'm just going to brush my white away. The rest of it will come off. I never worry about it with those erasers, or with... I never worry about it with those pencils, but you can see they line up pretty nice, which makes me happy. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my buttonhole, fold it in half, and I'm just going to take my scissors and carefully clip. Just make little, just make a little clip. Then I'm going to open it up, stick my scissors in. I should be nice and go get my buttonhole scissors out, but I'm not going to. Just get my buttonhole open just because it's easier to do at this point. I'm going to do this side and again just snip a little hole in it. Then I can get my scissors in there and cut it open nice and easy. Okay. All right, so now my zippers or my buttonhole is ready to go. I've got that all in there. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it one more press. Yes, I press a lot. And I'm lining it up. Just give it one more press. Then I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine. And I am going to top stitch it down. So just get that nice seam out there again so that I can see where it is. When I top stitch it, I'm going to top stitch it twice all the way around. My first top stitch is going to be an eighth of an inch from this edge. My second top stitch will be an eighth of an inch from that edge. Then I'm ready to put my cord in and my Santa sack is finished. So I'm really excited. I'll be right back after I do my two stop stitches and we'll get the cording in and we'll be done. All right, my very last thing to do is to get a my, my cording and put a pin through it. Stick that in there. And then I'm going to just go and find my two buttonholes. I'm going to start at one side 
and I'm just going to make this go right through, bring it all the way around, right back to the other side. And it only takes a minute to do it. It's more fuss work than it is anything else. Just pull it through. All right, now that I've got my pin through, I'm just gonna distribute this a little bit. And I am also going to take my pin out, my safety pin, and I'm going to take these two ends and I'm just going to create a loop and tie them together. Just going to do loop around, tie it together. And what will happen, because I'm going to take the tape off of the ends, there's a little bit of tape on both ends and I'm just going to pull it off or cut it off probably. Well, I guess it pulled off pretty good. Yep, there goes the second piece. And see if that's how long, and I think I want my tassel a little bit shorter than that. So I'm going to loosen it up, put it down. Uh, I think a tassel about like that's pretty good. So now I'll tighten it back up again. Pulling the strings tightly. And there they are. This will fray over time all by itself. So I think it'll be a nice cute little tassel. Then I'm just going to distribute this based on all of my fabric. And you can see that I've made it long enough that I can get it all the way open to get presents in there, but yet still be able to cinch it right up so that it's nice and tight. And um, there's Natalie's name at the top. So I probably, maybe I should, well, no, I think it's good like that. So there we go. There is my Santa sack for my granddaughter. I have managed to complete Austin and Natalie, Lion and Boone, and AJ's. I still need to get Olivia's and Sarah's made, and then all seven grandchildren will have their Santa sacks. I will be sending these on to their parents so that their parents can forward these to Santa along with their Christmas list. So come Christmas morning, everybody's Santa sacks are going to be filled with Christmas presents. And if not filled, they're going to have a few in there at least. Thank you so much for sticking around with me today while I showed you how I made my family's Santa sacks. If you'd like to make a Santa sack for yourself, you can find kits on my website. My website is www.missmarkersquilts.com and if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up and i'll see you again really soon bye everybody